Does the world need another review of the DeWalt DWE7485? Really? Yes, it does. Stick around and you'll get to know why. Now, everything is about perspective. And most of the reviews that I've seen on this saw are carpenters that are doing really thorough tests on it. But the needs of the carpenter may not be your needs. So if you are a aspiring woodworker, you want to get into some kind of detail work like furniture, your needs may be completely different. And I have no clue what the needs of the carpenter is, but I know what the DIYer aspiring furniture maker needs. So stick around for this. It's... <laughs> Let's look at the most obvious things first, the rack and pinion fence system. This is a fantastic fence system. It locks into place really well. There is absolutely no movement in the fence whatsoever. However, the side part of the fence, which is used to stabilize larger worksheets on the side, it does flex a little bit. And this is an issue when you are trying to build jigs that straddle the fence. I'm going to jump in here with some quick commentary. The main issue I have with the fact that the fence flexes a bit in the middle is that I don't feel comfortable clamping stuff to it, like a sacrificial fence or a stop block, because I'm afraid that I will bend the fence permanently. Also, the main fence will flex a little bit. It's more rigid of course but why they didn't use an aluminium extrusion here i don't know why and there is no off-to-market fences that is more rigid to this saw so let's take a look at some jigs of course it is possible to make jigs on this fence it's just not ideal this, for instance, is a spline jig I made, and it works quite well. So it is possible to make jigs for this, that straddle the fence. But the main problem with the fence, if you're planning to use this as a standalone saw and not dropping it into a bench, is the length of the fence in front of the saw blade. It is simply too short and when you're working with heavy or long pieces, it doesn't give you enough transverse support here. The second problem with this fence system, and that will be the same for all of the saws with the rack and pinion fence system, is that if you're planning to drop the saw into a workbench, like, like I see many people doing, the rack and pinion fence system really complicates that. And then you're paying for something that you really don't need. So if you see yourself dropping this saw into a workbench, that opens up a whole new world of different saws that you can look at, at. And it doesn't have to be the, the Walt DWE7485 with the rack and pinion fence system, because you really don't need it. What I would suggest that you do if you're dropping the saw into a workbench is that you purchase an aftermarket Biesenmeyer style fence and use it. That will be a lot better for you. Now bear in mind that this saw is designed for mobility. And at that, it is absolutely perfect. It's designed so that carpenters and tradespeople can lug this in and out of their vans and into customers' homes or, mob or job sites and whatever. But for the aspiring furniture maker, I have three problems with this table. 
One is the size of the table itself. It is simply too small and especially in front of the blade. The area here is too small to give a good support when you're working with heavy stuff, heavy stock or long stock. The third thing is the irregular shape of the tabletop. It makes it really good to grab and hold and carry, but if you're planning on dropping the saw down into a workbench, it just complicates things. If you look at the throat plate, it has a huge gap on the side. Now, for most cuts, that is not a problem, but I have already lost count of how many times I've lost stuff down here when I've done really thin rips. I'm fine with the fact that the DeWalt doesn't ship a zero clearance insert plate as standard, but they should offer it as an optional extra at least, so you don't have to rely on third party equipment that you really do not know will fit your saw or not. A lot of people have asked if you can fit a dado stack in here, and you cannot. However, there's a great alternative, and this CMT makes these grooving blades that are flat topped. And this one is the widest I could find. So this is a six millimeter wide one. And it's a really good alternative if you want to do trenching cuts like dados, grooves, rebates, and stuff like that. I've already used this blade a lot, and there's enough carbide on these teeth to last a lifetime. I'll leave a link to this in the video description. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. Now, what is by far my favorite feature of this saw is the quick change riving knife, and in my Honest opinion, this is a better safety feature than any saw stop function because it will make more people use the blade guard since changing between blade guard and riving knife is so quick. After having this feature on a table saw, I would never have a saw without. It could come with internet, whale skin hubcaps, baby sea lights for headlights and all other cow interior. I would still go for the quick change riving knife. So that's a real time change of the riving knife and you really have absolutely no excuse not to use the blade guard now. The blade guard is really well designed and you have a slot in between here that makes it easier for you to aim when you are trying to make a precise cut and the fact that the sides of the guard are moving independently is quite nice. This saw doesn't have a way to lock the lowering and raising mechanism of the saw blade. It is a quite good friction fit, but I've experienced that there's been a height difference in the cut between my test piece and my work piece. So that's another thing as an aspiring furniture maker you may want to think about. And also the only way to tilt the blade is in the front here. And I would really like to see a micro adjustment on the tilt. Another great thing about this saw is the huge paddle here on the emergency stop. 
And when we're talking about the stopping mechanism, this saw also has a blade break, which is just fantastic. Don't get me wrong guys, this is a fantastic saw. I really love it and I have learned so much from using this saw and the features it has have changed the way I look at different saws and it was very important when I chose my cabinet saw that it had certain features like the quick change of arriving knife and the blade break. If those were not available on the cabinet saw I would not have purchased it but luckily I found one. That being said, there are so many positive reviews about this saw out there that I felt it was important to point out that the saw has some flaws even though it is a very good tool. So what are my recommendations? Well, first of all, you can buy the saw, it's fantastic. If you're planning on using the saw on a stand and not dropping it down into a workbench, I would suggest looking at the DWE7492 because that has a little bit larger table. Now, if you're planning on dropping the saw into a workbench, that opens up a completely different world because then you really don't need the features of this saw and especially you don't need the rack and pinion fence system. And like I said before, if you're dropping it into a workbench, the rack and pinion fence system just makes it more difficult. And I would really suggest looking at the Biesenmeyer style aftermarket fence if that is what you're looking at. And then you have all kinds of saws available for you. So guys, I really hope you like this review of the saw. I hope it don't come across as negative because the saw is a really fantastic machine. You can't really go wrong with it. But I wanted to point out the fact that there are alternatives depending on how you're using it, who you are, and whether or not you're planning to put your saw into a workbench or leave it on a stand. But that is it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. Should you want to support me, you'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. If you don't feel like that, you can help by telling your friends about the channel on your social media of choice. Cheers, guys. Now, catch you in the next one.